Uncle Mud? Uh, yeah, they must have done. I finally found some decent music. Oh, yeah. The Trumps. That's number one, Eileen. It's two way family favourites, so you don't expect to hear caterwauling like that. You're listening to Danny Black, DB, your DJ, and this is Radio North. You too? You can't stop long, son. Your brother's wedding her. I mean, as soon as she comes out of hospital with a baby, well, they're going to need your room. Stop! What? Don't you go settling old scores, do you hear? You're a bad lot, Joe Norton. He was right to put you away. I want to see the copper. Constable Rowan's not in. Can I take a message? He heard about his missus. I'm sorry. Thanks. Shall I say who called? How you doing? All right. When did you get back? Just now. Come on. Dole's been in Borstal. He's not a bad lad. He was put away for arson. An old lady's caravan on him, an assault on me. But coming round like that the day he got back. Well, he was never one to pay his respects. Maybe it was more than that. If he's trying to change his ways, perhaps he's looking for help. Well, that's all we need. Joe Norton back in circulation and bandits on the radio. Pirates, Sarge. That's what they call themselves. I don't care if they call themselves Captain Hook and run round with parrots on their shoulders. I want these wireless merchants sorted out. Right, Sarge. The citizens of Ashfordley have every right to enjoy their Sunday afternoons without their eardrums being assaulted. I've had complaints. They broadcast from out at sea, don't they? Do they? Outside the three-mile limit. I didn't realise you were such an expert, Rowan. Point being, they're outside territorial waters, so we can't touch them. Oh, yes, we can. <laughs> yes? Right. Rowan, walk this way. Oh, 
Now, Mr. Hawkins, will you come through, please? Thank you. Now, Mr. Hawkins here is from the GPO. Investigations. Investigations. Not telephones. Not telephones. And Mr. Hawkins has been tracking these pirates, and their signal does not come from out at sea, it comes from dry land, which means they're committing an offence. Wireless Telegraphy Act. Which means we can and we will close them down, or rather you will, Ron. The signal is being transmitted from somewhere in here. Now, Rowan, you will accompany Mr. Hawkins while he finds the equipment responsible, and then we can make arrangements to confiscate it. What's well, the heck of a large area, Sarge? That's right. Like looking for a needle in a haystack. Well, you best get going then. And if you need any help, you can take the dedicated follower of fashion with you. They see Kim here. It's on again. The king of the discs, that's me, Jamie King. Oh, no, it's not. Uncle George! I've heard more tuneful air raids. Go and collect some glasses. <sighs> like that sort of music, do you? Yeah. When I get a chance to hear it. Huh. You'd hear some in Whitby tomorrow night. Would I? Hmm. There's a disco in the town hall. Yeah? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Sorry I'm late. I've been on the call. Hi. It's good to see you. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Bye. Bye. Tra. So how was the journey? Who do you reckon that is then? She certainly seemed pleased to see him. Husband turned up at last. <laughs> Terrific, innit? First decent bit of music we've had on the tranny. And we've got to close them down. Got them. Turn that flaming noise off, Jenner. It must be addling your brain. You what? I gave you a ten bob note, right? You only give me three and sixpence change. So? What do you mean, so? A whiskey's three bob. Two threes are six. Six from ten is four bob. It's not three and sixpence. It's the retail price index, you see, Claude. What is? That's to blame. What for? For me, putting the prices up. Penny on a pint, thrupence on whiskey. Thrupence? I hope you realise I'm nearly an old age pensioner and he already is one. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. And I'll tell you something else. There's plenty more pubs in this area. True. Yeah, well, I might start using one of them. But they put the prices up in all, Claude. <laughs> Thieving swines. Yeah. I've got some old maid stuff at my place. Have you? Let's go and sup some of that. Not putting your prices up, are you? No, it's for note. Oh, I think I can afford that. Is it left here? Right. No, not left. Nick's been meaning to do that for ages. Something to do. Still no job on the horizon. Put my application in for a parasol. Paratrooper, eh? Well, yeah. Well, it's a brilliant life. You get to see the world. I've got all the gear. You do things. And you make mates, real mates. So what do you reckon your chances are? Not good. My fault that though, innit? Sounds like you've been doing some thinking while you were away. All them things, you know, with a caravan and with a copper. I, I don't know why. But it's just a folk round here. Well, well, they always put us together, don't leave me in trouble. And after a bit, you think, all right, folk are never going to like me, but at least they'll take notice of me. I better go. Uh, Joe! Thanks. Right. What are you doing in there? Are you keeping tabs on you or something? Yeah, of course. I'm the boss, though, boy, aren't I? Right. If we get it right, we can market it. Might be a few bob in it. About the time somebody taught that George a right. lesson. Where are we going? Down the cellar.
lost them. What's up? They've stopped transmitting. We must be right on top of them. I think we were. Keep on running. Try this. It's one of my favourites. What is it? Rhubarb. Rhubarb. Mm. Uh, I think I prefer it dipped in sugar. Well, you said you wanted someone that was quick to make. And this is, is it? Aye. You can drink this in four months. Four months? I'm thinking more in terms of four hours. Oh, you can't make wine in four hours, Claude. I oh. know. But you can make whiskey. But that's illegal. Is it? Oh, well. We won't have to do it then, will we? Mm. You talk to him on his own, then watch him with his mates. I think Joe's at a crossroads, Nick. Right now, it's either back to the bad old ways or make something of himself. Come on, Katie. If folk will let him. Yeah, I'll pop round and have a word. Katie. Heard about the other new arrival, by the way? Hmm? Maggie's friend. George says the elusive Mr Bolton's finally come home. Hi, I'm DB, your DJ. Cresting the waves with all your raves and faves. Oh. No, it's only an offence to broadcast, not to listen in. I do have to get on anyway. Busy day? Oh, run off my feet. Well, especially with guests to look after. Yes. Joe, I was coming to see you. I've been reporting to me probation. Yeah, I know. You've been to the police house a couple of times. The garden's looking better for it. I'm sorry. What for? About your missus. <laughs> All that time when I was mucking about wrecking your garden. She was dying, weren't she? Yeah, we didn't know that then. I I've got to go. <laughs> you know this is illegal, don't you? Don't worry to get on with it. We'll be here all night. Have you smelt this? Smelt it. I want to pour it down my throat, not show it up my nose. OK, there's only him in the shop. And he's half blind. So we get him talking, yeah? I'll knock something off the shelf of a side at shop. And while he's sorting it out, Joe slips his hand in the till. And we've got our booze money for tonight. Sounds all right to me. Joe. What's up? Now. Right, then. Off you go. No. What do you mean? Life's too short, isn't it? Joe? Well, it's got to be better than staying in here all night. Yeah, well, I'm supposed to be meeting Nick. So we're taking with us? I bet he hasn't been our proper for ages. Evening. Might do him some good, you mean. What's that? Going to a disco tonight in Whitby. Maggie's husband's been telling me about it. Maggie's husband? He reckons it's going to be great. Hmm. So? Yeah, all right. Great. Great. <laughs> you doing requests? Of course. Let us in. <laughs> He's not that big, you know. So about it. Persuade him we're all 18. And not for another year, you're not. At least.
thought you said he'd soon liven things up. He will. I don't reckon he's been in Borstal. Of course he has. He's gone soft then. You what? Leave it our way. It's got to lie low for a bit, that's all. Doesn't have to stop us having a good time, though, does it? What's that? Got him off a bloke last time I was here. You swallow it. Yeah. He reckons it's like drinking 16 women peps in one go. Yeah, let's have some. You're not playing, Borstal boy. Go on, then. I told you you'd enjoy it. I told Gina from the pub, too. <laughs> Want a drink? Yeah. Come on, Phil. I'll get the drink. Ryan Poole and the Tremolos there. I am Danny Black, DB, your DJ, and we are going to rock tonight with the Kinks. I've heard you before, haven't I? Radio North. Uh, you've been listening in? Haven't had much choice. Yeah, we, we did have a few problems with the test transmission, but we've got our own frequency now. Yeah? Yeah, we, we start the proper shows tomorrow. Um, I'm Danny, by the way. Nick. I'm a local copper. <laughs> what? Score! <laughs> Score! <laughs> You've certainly set the village tongues wagging. Oh? I gather Dan is your husband. Oh, look, Nick, I'm sorry. I should have told you. <laughs> no, it's no one else's business. Dan is my brother. <laughs> well, you should have said something. I just thought the pirate radio connection might make things awkward for you. No, what he's doing isn't exactly illegal. But that's not how Sergeant Blake would see it. So what frequency will we be using then? Well, so I can listen in. He seems okay. The local copper. Yeah. Hey, look out! Oh, I'm. I'm glad it's you. Can you help us? I'm in trouble. Oh. Thank you. Oh, it must have been a bad batch. Yes. Oh. It certainly smells bad enough. You did draw off the first lot before you started sampling it. What do you mean? To avoid alcoholic poisoning. Poison? Mm, don't worry, you'll survive.
Stand up! Pit equipment! I know the young lad had his problems, but to kill himself? No. Yeah, well, it could have been drugs related. What? Yeah, been out with some of his mates. They'd all taken something. What, something that made a young lad kill himself? Nobody's that daft. Well, what was it? Well, we're waiting for forensics to tell us. Are you sure you're up to this? Uh, I keep remembering him as a wee bairn. He was always laughing. Afraid of nothing. Radio North. And it's a wonderful day. Radio North, the best sounds around. Ah, Rowan, I've just had my forensic report from Weatherby. Now, when you were at the Met, did you ever come across lysergic acid dithylamide, otherwise known as LSD? Yeah, I heard of it, sir. I've not seen it, though. Is that what young Joe was taking, then? Well, apparently, it brings on hallucinations and distortions of perception. Come again. Something like your normal state of mind of interest. <laughs> so, uh, what did the girl have to say? That she can't identify her supplier. You do surprise me. Any description? It were a dark, smoky club. They'd all had a skinful. Now, listen. This is the second drugs-related death this year, and there's even worse stuff doing the rounds this time, so just make sure you have better success with those two lads. Dumbo. Don't push it, Jimmy. Before you men even think about damaging the talent, Captain, remember there's a port over there full of sailors looking for nice, easy work. You've uh, not met Danny, have you? Hi. Who's that, Skid? The man that pays your wages, one of them. Hans. German. Dutch, and the only thing coming between your friend Jamie and a swimming lesson. So Joe was out of his mind on LSD? No, you're out of your mind, mister. That stuff's the magic. You won't understand. Try us. I could see these amazing colours going on forever. And I couldn't stop laughing. What about the headache? It was worth it. I could do anything. I could even fly. Like Joe. <laughs> You're right, Dave. They left me. I could hear them laughing. They didn't see the spiders. They were coming at me and I couldn't move. I just sat there and screamed. Well, this from chewing blotting paper. 
Why can't you just drink ale? Get a sore head and sleep it off in the morning. Because that's for your generation. You're just jealous because you're too old to live. Remember what the Who said? I hope I die before I get old. Yeah, will you take any more of that stuff and your wish might just be granted? Well, are you coming or not? I've got it all set up. I, I don't know what you're worrying about. I mean, we know what went wrong, don't we? Be a doddle this time. Well, you can please yourself, but if I do it on my own, it's all mine, you know. Oh, all right, then. Go on. Some things all in all. Hey! About time we got some new sounds. Sorry, man, these are for Button. Hans wants me to take them into the discos, I'm sure. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, uh, leave them, Danny boy. But Hans says goes, OK? The Holly's there, riding along on a carousel, which has got to be more fun than riding along ooh, seasick on the good ship Radio North. Wonderful Radio North. Joe really did want to make something himself, you know. You'd really taken to him, hadn't you? As good in everyone, Maggie. Do you know what happened yet? Yeah, he'd taken LSD. It's this new drug, supposed to send you a bit crazy. His mate thought he could do anything, even fly. Is that what made him do it? It's lethal stuff then, isn't it? Talking of which, Nick, word to the wise about Greengrass's latest tipple. You sure you've done it properly this time? Yeah. I threw it first on away, just like the nurse said. Right then. Well, bottoms up. Well, come on, get it down. We've got to check it if we're going to sell it. What's wrong with you? Note. Well, you, you mean it's all right? Yeah. It's, it's wonderful. Ah, it's nectar. <laughs> How does Hans finance all this? Usual, I suppose. Keep back from the record companies. Must be. Only we can play what we want. So? So I've worked three of these ships. Usually it's only the bands that cough up who get played. No, Hans doesn't interfere. A word of advice, Danny. Don't stick your nose in where it doesn't belong. We've got trouble. What's up? Ronan's coming. Oh, I knew it. I knew we shouldn't have done it. I'm too old to go to jail. Stop worrying. You won't think you're looking in the chicken shed. But the bell jars in the kitchen. Well, go and get rid of it. How? I don't know. Stop it if you have to. What, all of it? Go on, get cracking. I'll keep him talking. Now then, Constable. <laughs> is this a social call? Why, are you going to offer me a drink? What do you like? Tea, coffee, arsenic? <laughs> hey, you do better than that, can't you? Can I come in? Well, well, have you got a warrant? Do I need one? Well, it all depends on what you're you after. Look, Claude, we'll either do this the easy way or the hard way. Are you making whiskey? Whiskey? <laughs> Don't talk down. Of course I'm not. Now, let me give you a friendly warning. Stop it. Uh, how, how, can, how can I stop it? We haven't even started it. Yeah, next time I might not be so friendly. Where are you going? Hey, don't forget to wipe your feet. You don't have to take liberties, Ronan. Right, have you seen enough, have you? Hey, huh? What did I tell you? There's a nasty smell in it. If you must know, it's Alfred. He's, 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 he's had the trots. There is no whiskey! Well, the sound of it. Thanks, mate. Hey, did you hear about this kid who jumped off the church in Whitby? Yeah. 
saving dropping acid. All right. I'd like to do a warning at the end of the show tonight, telling them to keep off it. The kids listen to us. Look, if you want to send messages, become a postman. What do you think would happen if all the kids out there did what he did? We wouldn't have an audience. That's not funny. <laughs> have you been touching these? I warned you. And I heard you. In case you hadn't noticed, we're on a ship, things move about. Look, you still make too big a thing about do-gooding. We're a business, OK? I told you to get rid of it, not wash the Kazi out with it. It just slipped out of my hand. There must have been three bottles in there. I couldn't help it, Claude. Well, we can't risk making any more, not with Ronan sniffing about all over the place. Well, we'd best make sure next one's a corker then, hadn't we? You have. I've been doing some reading up. It seems every time you pass it through it's still, it gets stronger and stronger. <laughs> Expect you back till the weekend. Is that the drugs boy? I heard the anti drugs message you put out. Hope it does some good. That copper friend of yours. I need to talk to him. Okay. See you later. I've worked on three of these pirate ships, Nick. This one's different. In some ways, it's just the same long hours, lousy food, <laughs> seasickness. But there's something going on. Look, bands get ripped off lots of ways in this business. Dodgy managers, dodgy promoters, and sometimes dodgy record pressers knocking out copies of their discs. Bootlegs. That's what I reckon's going on. Buy one proper record, make a thousand copies and keep all the profits. They kept warning me off playing some of these records. It would certainly explain how that Hans character's been financing things. Who's that? He's one of the backers. Yeah, I've been wondering about that for a while. Danny, don't do this to me. I can't help it. Yeah, and I can't do six shifts all on my Todd. Look, I'm sorry, your old woman's sick, OK? You don't need to do six shifts on your Todd. I've got a mate with me visiting. He's just finished doing a stint down the Astoria Finchley Road, and he can cover till I get back. Good, is he? Are you kidding? He's one of the best. Well, it's the same, all right. Yeah, from the way this Jamie's been behaving, it could be part of the chain. It's got to be worth a look, Sarge. Well, that's the next problem, Rowan. As you said yourself, that ship is outside the three-mile limit, which means we can't get on board. Well, not officially, Sarge, no. Nick, there's a bloke outside in a pink tie. He says he wants to see you. Well, Nick, he fell for it. You are now Radio North's number one rock jock. Rock jock. Uh, that's right, Radio North, for the platters that matter, the latest biggie from the kinks. Well, that was, uh Rubbish. Yeah, close enough. That'd be all right. Well, unless you want to swim three miles in the North Sea, you have to be. It's not exactly a natural, right. is he? Let's try it again. relief. It's a new intro. I like what? Movers and groovers. <laughs> Movers and groovers. Oh, come on. If you can manage the platters that matter, you can manage movers and groovers. Right, um, jingle? Yeah. Radio North, the best sounds around. Um, hey, right, what's the okay. matter? Don't you fancy the Aidensfield Bobby getting bitten by the pop music bug? I don't fancy the Aidensfield uh, Bobby going out on that boat. Radio uh, here's a traffic report. Crossfade. <laughs> <laughs> Buy that man a drink. <laughs> What's all this about a whiskey still up at Greengrass's place? Oh, uh, Nick checked it out. Uh, he didn't find anything incriminating, though. Nothing incriminating? I've just seen Greengrass staggering all over the village green and isn't even opening time yet. 
Well, he said he won't clawed off. But all his mates are going up there now, too. Which means my takings are down. So I want him stopped. We best pay Greengrass another little visit, Bellamy. Ready then, Sarge. Who do you think you are, Rowan? Roy Orbison? <laughs> no, I'm just off to Whitby, Sarge. Any last minute instructions? Right then, uh, we'll need a code. You mean like they did in the war? The uh, pigs are flying over the uh, fallen oak tree? I could play a request for the Ashwoodley pigs. Well, something a bit more subtle might do the trick. Yeah, right, well, I'll play uh, a certain record to alert you with cryptic clues in the dedications. Right, Ventress, you're the crossword fanatic. Sounds like a job for you. Cryptic. Show me the ropes. Sure. Come on. Better get back to the station of the nation. I knew those bandits would be trouble. Pirates, Sarge. Sarge! The uh, pigeon fancies are cancelled to do at the Aidensfield Arms. And that's a crime? They're going to green grasses instead. Well, it looks like being a long stakeout, Bellamy. You weren't doing anything tonight, were you? No, Sarge. Good. Looking for something? Yeah, yeah, found it. Um, this, this boat's going down a storm in the London clubs. How about giving it a spin up here? Right now, if you want. You're on air in two minutes. This is J.K., the Pirate King. Stay tuned for a new boy, Nicky Stewart. Do you have to listen to that rubbish? Work, Sarge. Just monitoring the output. We've two hours of the latest sounds ahead, but first it's hey, dedication it's Nick. time. He sounds good, doesn't he, Sarge? No comment. Yeah, so from me and Nicky Stewart, not so much a, a rocking DJ as one who goes with the tide, I'd like to say a big hello to Phil. Hey! And uh, hello to Alf. And a big hello to Uncle Oscar. And this one is especially for Claude Greengrass, the scaffold. You're doing a great job, Nicky. I'm around until eight. Are you going ashore? Yeah. Dates that can't be broken. Got in every port, eh? You know how it is. Yeah, yeah, fighting them off me. Shouldn't we have brought customs and excise on this, Sarge? Under normal circumstances, Bellamy. But we've luckily just stumbled on this still, haven't we? Huh? Twenty years I've waited for this. One thousand pounds. What? Well, that's the fine for running an illegal still. But Greengrass hasn't got a thousand pounds. Or a spell in the nick if the offender can't pay. I've got you, Greengrass.
listening to Radio North. The time is eight o'clock. But, oh, did I really say that? Sorry, uh, I meant to say it's only seven o'clock out there in wonderful Whitby. But offshore, we're having such a great time, it's easy to lose track, especially when we're playing such fab music. Eight o'clock, Whitby. I'd start eating carrots if I were you, Greengrass. You're going to need to see me in the dark for a very long time. What are you on about? A cast iron case against you does not go up in smoke because of an accident. You must be puddled, you. It happens to be my livelihood. I'm not likely to set fire to it myself, am I? Move it, Bellamy. Otherwise, you'll have to arrest me for assault. Who are you going to hit, Sarge? I haven't decided yet. Control to Delta Alpha 2 Zero. <coughs> yes, Ventress. We're on, Sarge. Eight o'clock, Whitby. Right, out. Greengrass, I'll be back. I'll be out. OK. Jamie tells me you've been working the discos in London. Yeah, until last week. All right. Jamie? Uh, sorry, I forgot. I'm supposed to have a date with a girl in Whitney. Well, that's bad luck, my friend. Hey, play her request. Could you take her a message? You'll be late. Plenty more fish in the sea, I think. Bye, Nick. Clear as day, Sarge. Eight o'clock, Whitby. Right after the code record. Just as we arranged. Excellent. Everything OK up at Greengrass's place? Shut up, Ventris. Right. We'll just wait till our DJ clears customs and then follow him. Pick up the next link in the chain. You got your civvies with you? In the car, Sarge. I'm putting my trust in you, Bellamy, because the thought of Ventris and a pair of hipsters dancing the night away in a disco... ..fills me with horror. <laughs> How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Yeah, well, I, I wanted Jamie to take a message to Shaw for me. I'm supposed to be meeting a girl in Whitby. Ah, uh, too bad he hasn't gone to Whitby. Well, where else would he be going with a box of rounds? Ah, don't ask questions. Maybe it would be better if you didn't either. I'm only being curious if I'm missing out on some nightlife somewhere. Robin Hood's Bay. That's where the tender's gone. It's not where I'd go looking for nightlife. OK, we, uh, we've got a slight change of plan here. I was going to play sitting on the dock of the bay, but it seems to have gone missing, so instead we've got five more records taking us down to the news. And the first one is Go Now. Chips out. That was it. Pickled onion. That was the code for a change of plan. I know. Well, have you worked it out yet? Shut up. I'm thinking. He said five records going down to the news. Well, that means that Jamie's headed for five miles south of Whitby. Well, that'll be, uh... Robin Hood's Bay? There's nowhere else. Right, Ventress, let's go. Follow me. Turn back. The police are on to you. You're out of your depth, Nicky. You heard him, my moron. Back to the ship and now. He's being rumbled. We'll have to go back.
Brady can't help you, Jamie. So, yours are fuzzy. Yeah, now, don't do anything silly, all right? Nothing you can do about it, Nick. We're outside the three mile limits. I've had a word with the skipper. We're inside it now. Two dealers, Sarge, and a box full of LSD. You were supposed to call the Coast Guard. That's what we agreed. Was it? So they could tow you in. Now, thanks to you, Rowan, we've lost that blasted radio ship. Yeah, sorry, Sarge, and all the excitement, I forgot that bit. Bittersweet, Rowan. Bittersweet. We did get the drug dealers, though, Sarge. Yeah, and Greengrass won't be making any more of his illegal hooch. Shut up, Ventress. Yes, Sarge. Hello, Ted. They've got them. The men who supplied the drugs. Yeah, the police phoned last night. I know it won't bring Joe back, but at least the men who killed him are behind bars. This came for them this morning. From the Paris? Maybe he would have turned out all right after all, eh? You sure you don't fancy coming back, Nick? You're starting to sound quite good out there. Uh, no, I think my days as a rock jock are over, thanks. Uh, your days might be numbered. I hear they're changing the law. Yeah, well, if I can get a bit more experience while we're looking for new backers, I'll pull the tape together. Might even send it to the BBC. Oh, I can just see you as the next Jack de Manio. Thanks a bunch, sis. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks. Look after her, Nick. I'll try. He doesn't make it very easy. 